Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel. Today we're going to be going over splitting your power, power and ground planes and why you might want to do it a little bit different than you have in the past. In fact, how I've done it in the past. So in the past, I've done things like where I have a power plane and a ground plane as completely separate. So I would have my analog stuff. It has its own power and ground plane. My digital stuff has its own power and ground plane. And then there's some tie back in the center. What I've since started doing is actually making a ground plane uh, in the middle, or sorry, a ground plane for the entire thing, and then I start to modify that to replicate this similar experience without actually changing things up. This simplifies things on the uh, on the ma maintaining of nets. So instead of having things like GNDA and GNDD and then tying it back to GND at some star point, now everything is GND, right, ground. Uh, and then you, ha but you have to manage this, and that's the important thing. That's why this is an advanced topic. If you just uh, if you don't pay attention to how current is flowing through your circuit, and you don't pay attention to how things are, you know, how, where current is traversing, uh, then you could get yourself into big trouble here. So let's take a quick look at an example. It's a bit of a contrived example, but uh, an example all, all the same. Uh, okay, so this is a contrived example because this is the DOS blink input with a, uh, you know, a remade thing here. So let me um, let me add a filled zone. I'm going to use the same net, so you'll have to, you know, use a little bit of uh, imagination here. But we're going to say the, the power plane, uh, this is on the back side. Uh, so let's switch this over, mouse over, hit E, move this to the top side here. OK, so this is on the top side now. So we're going to say these are both power planes. And again, it, we're using the same net, but we're going to pretend that they're different nets here. Make sure it's the top side. OK. And again, we're just drawing. So this is the power plane that would provide power to each of these circuits. Now, what I would do in the past is I would, I would make a, a ground plane that matches this power plane. Right? So if I want to do that, I could select the plane, right click, hit duplicate, click to drop it, hit edit. So that's just selecting one of them. Move it to the back side, make it something like GND. And now there should be one on the back side here. We'll have to drop a via in order to get it to draw. OK, so now it should draw. So now we have a. Backside, front side, backside, front side, right? And so this is how I would have done it in the past. What you see is there's basically these copper pores, and they could go, you know, and oftentimes they would go uh, all the way back to somewhere like here, and they would tie underneath the, the power part. This is all uh, well known theory, right? This is something you can do. Uh, but like I said, we're doing this a little bit different here because uh, it's. It's a little bit. I, I think it's a little bit cleaner doing it this other way. So again, let's let's go and duplicate. So let's Control D, click. That just duplicated the plane there. Now I'm going to drop, change this to ground, move it to the back side. Okay. Now we should have. Uh, if we drop a ground plane here. Okay. So now we have back side and front side. We can get this one to match the other one, right? So now they're both kind of under the the part here, and uh, and they. So there's a power plane and a ground plane, and what you do is you see that you have this separate you have this separate plane here. Now what I was talking about is not having these drawn as separate planes. Instead, what you could do is have one large plane. So let's go and select ground plane here. So now I move this and I say, okay, now the entire board is on the same ground plane. Okay, B to redraw. So everything's on the gr same ground plane here. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that our our um, our parts that are here, it's kind of hard to see. Let's just select the courtyard so you can see where they are. Uh, or you can do Control B to show where they were. B Control B. What we could do here is that we could say, okay, yes, current could flow between these two parts, and yes, they are connected in a, in a way. <laughs> so be, in the actual schematic here, they are connected. So it's it's uh, you know a little bit of a contrived example, like I said. But what I normally do is I put everything on the same ground plane, and then I say, okay, I want, I want this. If this is the analog side and this is the dig digital side, and I think this is going to be super noisy. Hopefully, everything is flowing back. They're not, nothing is, no current is flowing between these two parts. But in, in the event there is, what I do is I put a cutout now in the ground plane. So I'll do it on the back side, and I'll say keep out copper pores, and I'll do something like this. Double click to finish. Now what I do is I hit B to redraw, and you see now we've basically we've maintained a similar ground plane on the back side. Right? It's a contiguous ground plane, the whole thing is. But now we've put cutouts here, and that allows for 
uh, if there's any you know noise that might leak over on the ground plane, uh, obviously any current that is noisy should be you know returning to its source. So if this is a noisy digital circuit, it should be returning back this way. There's really no reason for it to go left to right here. But in the event it does, cutting out the ground plane here should actually remove some of that uh, from some of that exposure from the noisy side on the left side to the more sensitive side on the right side. So again, instead of instead of making everything a separate ground plane like we did for the power plane. I basically I made a cutout here in the contiguous ground plane in order to uh, reduce noise from a, a noisier digital side to a quieter analog side. And I like doing that with, uh, with the uh, keypad zones. Keypad zones can also be, if you, don't, if you didn't see, there's a video about them as well, but keypad zones can also be used for, there we go, they can also be used say, for things like vias and tracks. Uh, you can't do it for components. But that is actually done with the courtyard layer. We also have videos about that. And uh, but basically, if you try and run a trace through here now, um, so it, it you know you can select it so that it's only for the power the the pores right the copper pores. But you see that these it actually won't allow you to finish this. Shouldn't oh that's on the front side sorry. <laughs> I was like what is going on here? Um, so if you try to draw drop a uh, a via here and then go uh, go through there, it says nope you have to go around. Now, if I want to do that for the top side as well, I could always go and edit this. So if I edit this plane, I could also say on the top side, don't allow any traces through. And that one that I did before, it says, nope, can't go through there. Have to go up and around. So basically, this kind of acts as a moat for uh, you know, noisier parts of your circuit. And, uh, and you can use it as a small cutout area for, you know, it's really a utility kind of tool. But I've done it a lot for separating noisier parts of my circuit. If I have, a, say, a switching regulator on the left side here and a more sensitive measurement circuit on the right side here, I'll do a moat here. They're all still connected electrically, but um, but as long as there's no current that needs to be going between these two things, then I feel comfortable putting a moat in there. <clears throat> so, like I said, this is a bit of more of a uh, advanced circuit or advanced topic here. Uh, I really like Hank Zumbelin's writings. He works for analog devices. And he, uh, he has some great, great things about, you know, should you use a star ground in an analog uh, system? Should you do things more like this, do cutouts? Um, and, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do things. This is just where I am currently, and I wanted to show that trick for you as well. Uh, we go over more tips and tricks like this for low-level analog circuits and measurement and testing and things like that over Contextual Electronics. That's contextualelectronics.com. Or you can go ask over on our forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. We'll have more videos here about KiCad. Thanks for watching.